Hello, hello, hello. Of course my messages are going off. Hmm. Hello, hello, hello. Please let me know where you're watching from. I hope you had a wonderful Sunday. And a wonderful week. Come on in. I wish I knew how to share this. <clears throat> Hopefully this will go better than the other night. And this is just a fun little filter that I like a lot. I think you guys should be able to see the title. It says Brute Beast. There is, There are a few things I want to address. But we can still do kind of a fun Q&A vibe too after I deal with those things. But I'm just giving you guys some time to come on in. I don't know if I just need to go live more to like reprogram the algorithm or what. Good evening. Welcome, 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 Maticia. Please share this. Let me know where you are watching from. Good evening. <clears throat> Got my water and my coffee and a laptop, which means I mean business. <laughs> I don't plan on this being super long, but we here, so. Featuring my new, I don't know if you can see it. Happy fall something. Happy fall. <laughs> I got it from this wonderful store called Pop Shelf. 
It's like right next to the hotel. I am in love with Pop Shelf. I don't know where Pop Shelf has been my whole life. It's like you walk in and it's giving like home goods, Hobby Lobby vibes with all the home decor and things like that. Hello, Nikia. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's great. So it's got all the little homey little items. Pop Shelf is amazing. Thank you. Why have you guys not told me about this place? Um, and, but then it's like a convenience store because it's got like the little glass doors with the drinks and things. And, but they have like the bougie little drinks that you can get from like home goods or world market. But then you can go and pick up your toiletries on the other side of the store. It's amazing. And it's like Walmart prices. I was like, can we order online from this place? And they were like, yes. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. I love it. Because I was like, what is this place? Let me just go in here. Woo. Yes. I have been disciplined. But it's just like, you know, when you need to replenish certain things. Because I just, I don't, I don't want to go to Walmart. I'm not anti-Walmart. I actually like Walmart. Um, I am not a Walmart slash Target, Target person. They have really great muffins at both Walmart and Target, I might add. And I love muffins. Okay. Um, but if a pop shelf is right there, why Instacart um, and pay more or why go into Walmart? Because that's just the whole... You have to prepare your mind and your spirit. Does anybody... Can I get a witness? in the room you have to prepare your mind in your spirit <laughs> to go into Walmart so I just mm, no um, but bless the Lord so let me know where you guys are um, watching from yeah the muffins that I like are like the blueberry streusel or just the plain like what cinnamon streusel muffins from Target but slap your neighbor and say but Walmart has <laughs> has these orange cranberry muffins. And they're amazing. They have other muffins too, but those are my favorite. Um, so yeah, and I'm sure they have blueberry as well, because who doesn't have blueberry muffins? But all muffins are not created equally. So yes, now that we have those things out of the way, as I've said before, I got my water. And we got my coffee, my leftover coffee. I drink coffee all day. This is the item I got from Pop Shelf. I got the water from Pop Shelf too, but who cares about that? And I got my laptop. I got scriptures pulled. So we got some things to talk about tonight. Um, and I'm going to address those items. But we can also address the items you guys have seen me posting about. You guys have responded like amazingly. In particular on Instagram, even though this is Facebook. Instagram is not letting me go live. I don't know what that is. And I don't know if I've received a verification yet that allows me to go live on TikTok. I don't even like TikTok like that. Um, and they have an attitude problem on TikTok right now. So we here. Because cause, cause, y'all my writer dies on Facebook. But no, there is a post that's done really well. I mean, not like viral or anything. But that has you guys have been very responsive with on Instagram in particular, the why aren't you married? So we can definitely talk about that as well. But I want to deal with these brute beasts. So before I get out of pocket, I don't want to get out of pocket. So you, I need the saints praying. Let me know where you're watching from. Type in the comments. Share it in your timeline. Send it to some people you think I want to watch. But let me pray. Because what I don't want to be is in my flesh. I don't want to be a brute beast. Okay. <laughs> so father in the name of jesus we thank you for tonight i thank you for the opportunity and the technology to be able to go live in el nombre de jesus so father i want you to be pleased don't let me talk crazy jesus put the call to my lips lord <laughs> put it to my lips jesus um but let me say what needs to be said and what is beneficial to be said to the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. So we bless the Lord. We thank you that the people who need to see this will see this. And the people who don't, won't. Uh, we bless you. We glorify you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Bishop. Bishop Sean. 
how you doing? Thank you, Lord. Yeah, y'all know I need a little extra help sometimes. Um, brute beast. I don't know if you guys have noticed a theme for the past couple weeks or so, a few weeks maybe. I've been posting when I address certain subjects. Let me know where you're watching from. Drop it in the comments. We got Nashville in the house. Yay! Um, I've been I've been sharing a passage from the Book of Jude. Y'all know there's only one chapter, just verses. Um, and then also a similar passage from Second Peter two. So I want to start with those. We're going to go in chronological order. Well, not chronological, but in book order. We got Petersburg, Virginia in the house. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start with 2 Peter 2 and at verse 10. And it starts in the middle of a sentence. But, um, oop, wait a second. Um, yeah, it starts in the middle of a sentence. But I'm going to start, um, I'm just going to start at verse 10. 2 Peter 2. 2.10 And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. I don't know why this light is so bright. I'm sorry. I'll try to not get too close. Maybe that's what it is. Okay. And despise authority. I want you to hone in on, on these words. Okay. And um, verse 11 says... Wait a second. Let me just start over. Okay. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. And I'm reading from the New King James, which is my primary. The footnote on dignitaries here. My Wi-Fi is being a little slow. When I clicked it, okay, it means glorious ones or glories, okay? So that could even be, a lot of time, a lot of this context is talking about angels, even fallen angels, okay? So this means they're not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. It doesn't say what type of angel or what type of dignitary. It just says it's a dignitary because there's dignitaries on both sides. Republicans, Democrats, Independents, Green Party. <laughs> Heavenly angels, fallen angels. Okay, you get the idea. Um, whereas angels who are greater in power, which means they're greater than you in terms of creation, greater in power and might, do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. Now this particular passage, the way this is grouped in the New King James, it says the doom of false teachers. So, so we're dealing with the false, okay? Um, we're dealing with the false. Now, it goes on to say when it addresses the depravity of false teachers, uh, starting in verse 12, but these, like natural brute beasts, made to be caught and destroyed. The Bible said it. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I'm just, I'm just reading what the Bible said, okay? Speak evil of things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery. Let's check the footnote there. The footnote says an adulteress. Okay. Um, so that could be literal. That could be spiritual. Okay. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin enticing unstable souls. So there's a type of person who is drawn to these brute beast false teachers. They're unstable souls. We're going to address that a little later, okay? We're still in verse 14 of 2 Peter 2. They have a heart trained in covetous practices and are accursed children. They have forsaken 
the right way and gone astray following the way of Balaam the son of Beor who loved the wages of unrighteousness you can find that in numbers chapters 23 to 24 real actually no 20 22 to 24 and even though he's not mentioned by name 25 okay so just numbers 22 to 25 that's where you got Balaam and then Joshua 13 32 or 22 says he was slain by the sword as a soothsayer went from being a prophet of God in the book of numbers to dying as a soothsayer in Joshua 13 okay uh, they have forsaken the right way and gone astray following the way of Balaam the son of Beor who loved the wages of unrighteousness they gave him a diviner's feast so he acted like a diviner um, but he was rebuked for his iniquity by a dumb donkey. Dumb is not an insult. It means it cannot speak. So God opened the mouth of a creature that cannot speak. I think they could speak before the fall of man. That's just me. But at this point, donkeys ain't talking. Okay. But the angel of the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. Okay. Speaking with a man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet verse 17 says they these are wells without water clouds carried by a tempest for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever y'all go back and read all of second peter 2 when you get a chance but this is talking about false teachers okay brute beasts clouds without water excuse me wells without water okay made what what did it say earlier uh verse 12 but these like natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed they're made for destruction when you enter into the state you're made for destruction you do destruction and you're made for destruction god help you okay so we read that now we're gonna go to jude one because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established okay so now this passage is dealing with the old and new apostates that's what the subtitle says in the new king james and we're going to start we're going to start at verse eight okay likewise also these dreamers defile the flesh reject authority so peter said they despise authority now Jude is saying they reject authority. Jesus is my spiritual father. Okay. And speak evil of dignitaries. There's that phrase again. Speak e evil of the glorious ones or the glories. Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring him a reviling accusation but said the Lord rebuke you so he didn't rebuke out of his own authority because there was a prince arguing with the prince over the body of a prince but even though they were all evenly matched he said the Lord he went over his head he said it's above me now the Lord rebuke you okay but these brute beasts okay these speak evil of whatever they do not no so you're not intelligent on the subject you're not well versed you're not well learned you do not have knowledge you do not have research you do not have discernment you do not have rhema you do not have revelation the bible says these speak evil of whatever they do not know and whatever they know naturally like brute beasts there's that phrase again in these things they corrupt themselves so you're not behaving yourself properly you're corrupting yourself woe to them for they have gone in the way of Cain Genesis 4 and have Cain slew his brother it was the first fratricide the first homicide and the first fratricide at the same time okay fratricide is the murder of your brother uh, so you've gone the way of Cain you kill your brother okay out of jealousy you kill your brother you have run greedily in the error of Balaam for profit. So now your motivation is monetary. You go where you think you're going to make a profit. 
the prophets for profit. Okay. And they perished in the rebellion of Korah. Korah, if you don't know. Now, if you guys are familiar with the, the Charlton Heston's Ten Commandments from back in the day by Cecil B. DeMille, classic. I don't know why they play it at Easter every year on TV, but they do. Okay. You know who Dathan is, even though they kind of added a little bit. He was he was big on historical accuracy, but they did kind of add a little bit to who Dathan was. So it doesn't talk about Korah, but it talks about Dathan. But in the Bible, Korah and Dathan were together. It was Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. So Korah led a rebellion against Moses. Basically, like, we learned it too. We got power and authority too. We They came against Moses because... Who gonna check me, boo? And the Lord opened up the ground and did a new thing. And Korah and Dathan and Abiram and their wives and their children, their tents, their donkeys, their livestock, everything they had went down to Gehenna, <laughs> to Hades, alive. That was the, the end. That was the end of Korah for his rebellion. Number 16, okay? So you've gone the way of Cain, who murdered his brother. You've gone the way of Balaam, who was motivated and controlled by money and, and prestige. And then you've gone the way of Korah, who brought a rebellion against the prophet who spoke to God face to face. Okay, let's, let's, let's look back. In our minds at the story of of Moses Aaron and Miriam his older siblings are are having a conversation they fed up they a little jelly they a little envious well we're we're prophets too we're anointed too God was like Aaron I got your number I'm gonna deal with you later but Miriam home girl let me holla at you um leprosy for a week because I speak to prophets in dreams I I give y'all discernment. I speak to you other ways. But I speak to him face to face. So you thought you could come against him because you thought you were dealing with your baby brother. Because you speak evil of things you know not of. <laughs> you thought you were dealing with your little brother that you saved from the Nile. No. You're dealing with my prophet. You're not coming against me. You're coming or you're not coming against him. You're coming against me. You're coming against God. You're not coming against his will and his motivation and what you think his issues are. You're coming against the movement and the strategies and the plans and the mind of God. Leprosy for 7 days outside the camp. And that was his sister who was his intercessor. Who, who was filling herself a little bit too hard for the moment. But Korah, he said, everybody to me. <laughs> Everyone who was on the Lord's side, come to me, come away from their tents. Because if I be a man of God, the ground is going to open up. And they're going to go down to hell alive. And they did. This is a type of spirit we're dealing with in the body of Christ. We have people who think that they rank. And they don't. We have people, they think that their social media following indicates their rank in the spirit. Hello, Apostle Fred, God bless you. They think that their following online indicates their rank in the spirit, indicates their authority in the spirit, indicates their jurisdiction in the spirit, and they're wrong. So they talk about whoever they want to, especially if they have less followers, because of course God is with me more because I have more followers than you. What? What if God allows you to go through a rough season and, and your whole channel is shut down or you get censored on Facebook or, or just something happens or I don't know, a blackout happens and, and the whole cyber or whatever is knocked out. Did you lose your authority? Did, did you lose your jurisdiction? Because you don't have no followers no more. So what happens if you get established on an app? So let's take Clubhouse, for instance, okay? Clubhouse came through, shot themselves on both feet, <laughs> and downgraded the app and removed everybody's followers. People went from having millions 
for thousands of followers. I had like maybe eight something, closer to nine, but 8,000 followers. And they chopped it down to hundreds. Just whoever you follow and follows you back. So if you're, you're a spiritual authority and your spiritual importance was based on the number of followers you had on that app, then you lost your authority when the app downgraded. But if you have a brain in your head and discernment in your spirit, <laughs> you know that a social media app does not give you authority. Now we know when it comes to authority, there can be there can be intellectual authority, right? There can be there can be authority in a certain arena, right? Just like the Bible says there's different types of glory. There's the glory of God, there's the glory of man, there's the glory of woman. There's there's different types of glory. You can have glory in sports, right? So you can gain authority, right, in certain spaces. So you can have influence. If you are well learned, well versed, well educated, if you have uh strong discernment if god has given you a revelation john the beloved you can become an authority in that space right so we have influencers um just generally speaking who are their authorities in marketing their authorities in in business their authorities in sports their authorities in in health and fitness right so that that's a type of authority but that's not spiritual authority that's natural authority and that's great shine where God places you baby okay do what he puts you here to do but that does not reflect your spiritual authority in your rank in the spirit even Michael the archangel the prince of God would not bring a reviling accusation against the cast out prince Satan the accuser of the brethren so when we see people bringing reviling accusations, when we see people bringing judgment after judgment, and you have to understand there's a difference between a righteous judgment and an unrighteous judgment. There's a difference between judging with the righteous judgment and being judgmental. They're not the same. Okay? People like to think they're the same because nobody wants to be judged, nobody wants to submit to judgment, and nobody wants to submit to discernment. But judgment and discernment is not based on whether or not you like what's being said. It's based on whether or not it's true. Not factual, because facts are variable. It's based on what's true according to the written word and the spirit of God. Test the spirits to see if they be of God. Judgment is not about your will. It's not about your preferences it's not about your opinions right it's about what the mind of God is on the subject with the heart the counsel go back and look up the seven spirits of God what is he saying on the subject and, and that's meaning like seven aspects it's not like there's seven Holy Spirits okay we're not doing that <laughs> Um, but what, what are the seven aspects of the spirit of God, right? What is his mind on the subject? What is his heart, his counsel on the subject? What, what, how does he weigh it? Because what is being called prophetic is not prophetic. It's, it's, it's unrighteous judgment. It's self-righteous judgment. It's vendettas. It's not righteous judgment, okay? So I already read to you 2 Peter 2. We already covered Jude 1. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established, okay? Oh, they're doing the work of the prophets. Let's, let's okay, because the fivefold, generally speaking, has an assignment, okay? Somebody, um, it was Second Peter, I believe, that talked about the people who are drawn to these false teachers, these depraved teachers, and please like this and share this and comment and send people to, to join us, okay? Um, it, Second Peter talks about unstable souls. These are the ones who are drawn to these, like a moth to the flame, right? Like a moth to light. They are drawn to these depraved false teachers. Um, Paul at one point, I think it's 
somewhere in Second Timothy, he talks about um, gullible women. Now, I, this is not a mark against women. This is a specific thing he was dealing with. But those are the ones who are susceptible to those types of false teachers and, and, and false ministers, right? There's always a particular type. So if you're gullible, why? If you're unstable, why? Let's focus on the instability. So if you're saying, well, I'm a prophet and this is what God has called me to do. What does the Bible say about the fivefold? Okay. Ephesians 4, 11, 16, this is like the cornerstone of the fivefold and what their mission is, how they operate, what their purpose is, okay? And he himself, Christ, the chief cornerstone, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Pause. What equipping are you doing? I know you're nitpicking, I know you're critiquing, I know you're you're reacting. I know you're 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 casting allegations and accusations, but what equipping have you done? How have you helped the body of Christ? Legitimately. What is your niche? How what way has the Lord equipped you to equip us? right so if you're not equipping or training you're not a prophet okay um now you might be called to be a prophet but being called to a thing being prophesied into a thing is not the same as being the thing okay so that's verse 12 okay uh for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry the next part of that is for the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ. So if I'm constantly attacking, constantly nitpicking, who is being built up? Who is being built up? Because there is a time to tear down. There's a time to call out. There's a time to do what the prophet said, cry aloud and spare not. But who have you built up? I'll wait. Who have you built up? Who have you made stronger in the Lord? Who have you given resources to that has made them better in Christ? Okay? Equipping and training. So equipping and edifying. Okay? Verse 13. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. Pause. The purpose of the fivefold is to equip and edify so we come to the space of unity. We don't stop until there's unity. In okay, so so we do take the word in context. We do take the word in full. Jesus said, "I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword." But he's talking about who's him versus those who are not his. Later, I believe it's Paul who talks about, I'm paraphrasing, how there must be factions among you. There must be divisions to show who is approved of God and who is not. Right? We see kind of a showdown of this with Paul. I want to say it's Acts 19 where, you know, Paul is doing strange miracles. He's doing peculiar miracles. Demons are being cast out. The sick are being healed. All manner of miracles are breaking out, right? Because people, the cloths and the handkerchiefs and the things like that, they're taking them, they're being healed, right? So then the seven sons of Sceva are like, hmm, we're exorcists. We, we got this, right? We, okay, let's try. Come out in, in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Then demons said, Jesus I know. Paul, we got Paul in the record. He, he, Paul is a problem. Okay? Who are you? Because hell recognizes rank. Hell recognizes efficacy. So when we're in the body of Christ, the moment we become saved, it's not just the body. We are a body. But it's not just the body. It's a military body. Marine Corps. Corps means body. It's, it comes from the Latin word <laughs> for body, right? You are part of a military body. In the way that you rise through the ranks, 
is through your decorum as well as your achievements. It's a meritocracy. You work your way up. This is not the Great War. This is not the, the early seasons of Downton Abbey where you just get a rank because you're a gentleman. No, 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 no. And you're just, you just stay low ranking because you're poor and you don't have a title. No, that, that's not the body of Christ, okay? That's not even how regular milita military works these days, okay? You rise through the ranks. You gain rank by being in order and proving yourself okay and when you run off and do what you think is right in your own eyes read the book of judges you might get court-martialed because you thought you did something wonderful and you thought you did something you had the right to do and the ability, and you may have even had the ability to do it. But then your superiors come and they put you in the clink overnight. <laughs> they court-martial you or you get in some sort of trouble because what you thought was a good thing, what you thought was a necessary thing, actually risks the lives. And you got out of order and you did your own thing so you stepped out of rank you disrespected the rank and the authorities that be because you knew better if you guys I'm sure there's nobody here y'all know I'm a hardcore Tolkien fan okay I love C.S. Lewis and I love J.R.R. Tolkien okay Lord of the Rings okay if you are a diehard Tolkien fan you've read the Silmarillion now both C.S. Lewis in the Chronicles of Narnia and Tolkien in um, the overall Middle Earth writings, history of Middle Earth, both utilize music to demonstrate creation, okay? Um, with Tolkien, when, um, I think it's called the Song of the Ain or whatever, okay? The Song of these heavenly beings, right? This is how creation comes into being. So you have, um, I think his name is Manwe, who's like the God, Jehovah, in this story. And then you have this other one, what is his name, Melkor, and I'm probably getting the specific names of when they're used mixed up, whatever. So you have Manwe and Melkor, okay? Melkor thinks he can do better than the melody that Manwe has put in place. So he breaks away from the melody and creates discord. That's how they illustrate what Satan did. Because Melkor is the type and shadow of Satan. Sauron is like a lesser version down the line. <laughs> but yeah, so you create discord. We're supposed to be in unity. Ephesians 4.13. We're supposed to be in unity. We're supposed to be edifying and, and um, equipping until there is unity. Till we all come to the unity of the faith, but you're creating discord. You're creating strife. You're creating contention. I love uh, the way Apostle Ryan Lestrange describes strife. Strife is a portal because the Bible says where strife is, there's every evil work. So you become a walking portal of strife. But you're but you calling yourself a prophet. Now, you might be a prophet. I'm speaking generally. You might be a prophet, right? But you're not acting like a prophet and you're not doing the work of a prophet. You're creating discord in the body of Christ, okay? So till we all come to the uni of, unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. And this is not saying we are perfected, but we're being perfected as a body, right? Perfection in scripture is not what we think it is in the natural. It's not perfectionism. It's, 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 it's striving toward holiness. It's being righteous. Right? Um, so it's, it's, it's what the body says. Welcome to those of you coming on. Please share this. Let me know where you're watching from. So this, this is the purpose, right? To a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness, not of you. Not the fullness of what you think is right. 
the fullness of Christ. We got Jacksonville in the house. Whoop, whoop. I used to live there. Okay. To the fullness of Christ. So, so the fivefold apostles, prophets, prophets and evangelists, or excuse me, prophets and apostles in particular, all the fivefold, yes, but prophets and apostles are supposed to work together, not do this. Okay. And while there's different ranks among prophets and apostles, generally speaking, apostles outrank prophets. And I'm a prophet, okay? They outrank us. Y'all found me. Y'all found me when to show up the other night, okay? <laughs> I'm grateful that you're here, okay? Because I tried to go live on Friday and y'all tried to play me, okay? But yes, so there are ranks to this thing. And, you know, the, the, the saints and the ain'ts on TikToks, where is rank in the Bible? Can you read? Real question. Can, can you read? Okay. Now that you can read, check. Can you see the forest for the trees? Because a lot of y'all see trees and don't understand that it's a forest. <laughs> it's called context. It's called reading for context. I read to you 2 Peter 2. I read to you Jude 1. If you don't see the rank indicated... All throughout that, especially when it's referencing Michael and Satan arguing over the body of Moses, a prince arguing with the prince over the body of a prince. Rank. Okay? Y'all don't like that? Go to Zechariah 3. You see the former high priest on the mountain of God who had been cast out, Lucifer, right? Who has come to accuse the current natural high priest, Joshua. And because there's nobody higher <laughs> on the earth, here comes God and says, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. How are you the Lord saying the Lord rebuke you? But even the Lord, even the Lord God Almighty said the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Not, I don't even know how to explain that. <laughs> He rebuked the high priest, the, the ex-high priest in heaven who came against the high priest on the earth. Now, here's the thing. Satan had a legal right because his garments were filthy. Joshua's garments were filthy, right? And so God said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Now change his garments to remove the accusation. Now that's a different topic. Y'all know I like to teach y'all garments. I'm not doing it. I'm not teaching up filthy garments tonight. Maybe later in the Q&A we get to cover that. I love it. Okay. But the point was rank. Rank matched rank. Okay. Now you can be demoted in rank. But there, there, there are still generals in the body of Christ. We saw one die at the end of the year. There were people who have attained to general rank in the body of Christ. Some of them are retired. Some of them, I was watching an episode of Blue Bloods the other day, and Jamie Ray, I love the Blue Bloods, right? Jamie Reagan tells a cop who's been caught up in some, you know, I forget what he did. But he says, you're either, I'm either going to expose you, <laughs> or you're going to turn in your papers today. You're going to resign today. And keep your dignity. Some of these people need to resign and keep their dignity. Keep your rank and sit down. Okay? <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord. Um, look out for your own. Okay? At this point, look out for your family. Because you have a family, probably. You probably have a wife, children, grandchildren, depending on what you've built, who you are, you know, or maybe maybe a husband, right? Maybe, maybe you're a woman, right? So whatever the situation is, some of these people need to sit down. Retain your rank. But my point is... While you can be demoted if you're still active, right? Or maybe maybe if something really egregious happens, you generally don't lose your rank. You may no longer be relevant. But we honor you for the rank that you've attained to. Thank you. Give honor where honor is due. That's what the Bible says, right? Thank you for what you have brought into the body of Christ. We can't have you at the table today because this table is for the pure. But if there's fruit worthy of repentance, we would love to restore you and be reconciled to you. 
once we see that you are indeed restored and reconciled to Christ. And not a moment before. But we love you. But we love you. That's, that's a little bit of a different topic. Okay. My point is rank matters. And there is rank in the body of Christ. And I think sometimes people think that maybe because they think they don't rank high. Maybe because they actually don't. Maybe because I think it's just offensive language in 2024 where everybody thinks everybody is the same. And everybody is not the same. Everybody is not the same in the world. We Are we not watching the Olympics or hearing about the Olympics? We are not all the same. I took gymnastics as a little girl. I am not Simone Biles. We are not created equal, okay? I would hurt something, harm something, break something, injure, okay? It's not my gift. We're not equal. But I can write, baby, and I can teach, baby, and I prophesy and I sing. I don't know if she can sing. Like, we're not the same, okay? But if I try to go over and start doing gymnastics, we about to see who outranks who, <laughs> It won't be me, okay? So I can't, I'm not a swimmer, okay? I, I hate running. My daddy was a runner. I hate running. The only races I was in were the ones they made you be in in grade school, maybe in college. No. Okay, we did have gym class at Oral Roberts University to my great chagrin. We did not get along, okay? So there's different ranks. It should not be offensive if you're in your lane. It should not be offensive if you know your identity in Christ. It should not be offensive if you are confident in who you are and whose you are and what he has given you to do in the earth. But because people are trying to keep up with the Joneses, they don't like the discussion of rank. It's biblical. Does the Bible need to come out and say rank is biblical for you to recognize that it's all throughout the Bible and that it is biblical? Like, do we see the, do we not see the titles? He's given some apostles, some prophet, everybody a prophet. Mm, are you? Because cause the fruit we just read about in Ephesians 4, I, I don't really see it. No, maybe you're becoming, okay? Hashtag becoming. Maybe you are becoming a prophet. But there's still a difference between saying you are called to be a prophet, that you're a prophet in training. You're, you know, in, in the Bible, what they were called in the Old Testament was the sons of the prophet. The sons of the prophets. That I mean, it could have maybe been literal sons, but it's dealing with the, the school of the prophets. So all them people who was following around Elijah before he left where Elisha was, taunting Elisha kind of, school of prophets. They were in training. They were in training to be prophets, right? The book of Proverbs is a book of instruction to royal princes. Excuse me, to princes. Royal princes is... is um. What's the word? It's repetitive. Okay, it's a book of instruction to princes. We could throw in nobles, okay? Because eventually somebody's going to become noble. <laughs> Down far enough in the bloodline, right? It's a book of instruction. It's a book of guidance from a king to a future king. From a king to his sons, to princes. This is how you govern yourself. It wasn't written to us. Ladies, okay, it benefits us. It behooves everybody to read the book of Proverbs. I'm telling you specifically, the specific, the specific audience was David to Solomon, and probably David to all his sons. But because we know the wisdom books are attributed to Solomon, obviously, okay. So you have to recognize aspects. It wasn't written to everybody. Well, I'll leave that alone. Okay, so we're still dealing with the purpose of, of, of what we're put here to do. Prophets, leaders, ministers, influencers. And there, I say influencers. Y'all should know by now. That's not a bad thing. I'm a influencer. 
Okay, I'm not a big one, okay, but I am a minfluencer. And, and that's just the word I coined for ministers who are influencers. There is nothing wrong with that. Social media it makes up a lot of the world we live in, right? There's nothing wrong with that. How you do it, though, matters. And the motive for doing it matters. If God sent you, great. If he didn't, or if he sent you but you deviated, not great, okay? So... Now we're in Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. We're a household. This is not, this ain't Hogwarts where you got Gryffindor over there and, and Slytherin over there and whatever the other ones are. Like, we're not, that's not what this is. The tribes of Israel were still one family. They were still all brothers, right? They still had one father, Jacob. We have one father, right? Okay, whatever your denomination, affiliation, organization, fellowship is, we are one, right? We're not dueling churches. It's not your gang versus my gang. Like, that's cultish behavior, okay? That that ain't him, okay? So, we are... um. Uh, fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of faith, uh, excuse me, household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. So when we are in unity we are operating and growing together as the holy temple of the Lord, in the Lord, right? In whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. How is God dwelling in us when we <coughs> to our brother? Because again, the, the, the boys, the apostles, Peter and Jude said, you went the way it came. Cain killed his brother. Balaam went after a prophet, but the prophet, he received the diviner's fee to bring a curse on Israel. And because he was not able to verbally go and curse Israel through enchantments or whatever, the Lord would overtake his spirit and he would prophesy. He was only possessed by the spirit of the God. And he prophesied. He's the one who said God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Balaam said that, okay? But when you read context right after you've read Balaam's specific story in numbers chapters 22 through 24 you go over to 25 and you see somebody succeeded in their plot they chose a different method so he became a snare to Israel because they got Midianite and Moabite women because it was the king King Balak of of Moab I believe who who sent the diviner's fee right to seduce Balaam to curse the children of Israel so Cain committed fratricide the murder of his brother okay then you have Balaam who intentionally placed a stumbling block to bring destruction and what happened was when they sent the gorgeous women from Moab and Midian they sent the sisters in okay in the the this adulteresses and the heart we just gonna call them harlots okay the harlots seduced the people of god into spiritual harlotry so it went from natural harlotry to spiritual harlotry because balaam said i can't curse them because whom god has who has blessed i can't curse i can't he couldn't find a way now he did raise that altar at at uh pisgah where Moses tripped up down the line because you got to remove the altars. You you have to deal with the ancient altars. Different topic. Okay, we're going to leave that alone. And Moses couldn't enter the land because there was an altar. Okay. Um, but no, there was a plague that struck the children of Israel because he said, I can't curse them, but I can get them to bring the judgment of God themselves. I can get them to curse themselves. So he became, the Bible says he became a stumbling block. He placed a stumbling, I believe it's maybe Revelation 2, <laughs> somewhere in the Bible. It says he put a stumbling block 
before the children of Israel. And also Revelation 2, Jesus likens the spirit of Balaam. He uses almost the exact same language to describe the spirit of Balaam as the spirit of Jezebel. Because it's the same spirit. It's all the spirit of Jezebel, okay? You're manipulating for your own goals and intentions, which, you know, those that mission is put forth in Revelation 2, okay? So, so I'm a prophet. Where is your equipping? Where is your edifying? Where is your movement toward unity? It doesn't mean we don't give hard words at times, if God gives it to you. It doesn't mean that we don't give words people don't want to hear, because we have to sometimes, right? But what is your heart? What is the motive behind what you're speaking, right? And welcome to you guys coming in. Let me know where you're watching from. Please share this, okay? So, so, but I'm called to tear down. I'm called to call out. Okay, we, we, I got more Bible. I told you I had, I had verses. I had my laptop. I got my laptop out, okay? I got my laptop, my water, my coffee. So we about to do some, some walking through the text, okay? Jeremiah 110, y'all know it. But, but let me read it and hear what I'm saying. So he's speaking to the prophet of God. He says, see, I have this day set you over nations and over the kingdoms. We get excited about that. Yeah. Right? Okay. To root out and pull down. To destroy and to throw down. To build and to plant. What does this tell me? This tells me God is not sending you to root out and pull down and destroy and throw down unless he's also given you an assignment to build or edify and to plant, to establish. Believe in God and you'll be established. Believe his prophets and you'll prosper. So, so there should be something coming from you, prophet, where God is establishing his people and God is prospering his people, spirit, body, soul, some type of way. They should be established and they should be prospering in some way because God sent you. So the question is, did he send you? Brute beast. Did he send you? Or are you doing things that have caused you to shape shift and now you're something that's created for destruction? Thank you, Dr. Shirley. He's welcome. <laughs> We don't want you to be creative for destruction. And, and people are like, name a name. Okay, if you know, you know. Okay, but also, y'all know me by now. You should. Okay, I don't like to name names. Why? Because you'll get stuck on a name. Well, Desiree said, because y'all be in my inbox sometimes. They be on TikTok. Well, be bold enough to say that. It, who lacks boldness? What I have is wisdom. Ain't nobody scared. <laughs> we have wisdom because y'all will get stuck on a name. We all do it. It's a human inclination. So it, y'all will get stuck on a name. <laughs> okay, let me just point out my name because you are but flesh and blood, like we all are. Okay, in most instances, and it will be hard for you to let go of that name. Okay, other side. You can know somebody else who is operating in the same operation, in the same spirit, and it might not be the name. Because it's not just one person who does these things. It is, I can think of multiple off the top of my head right now. It's not just one person who's operating like a brute beast and calling themselves a prophet, and they are not, Okay. Or it's not just one person who's operating like a brute beast and they were called to be a prophet or they started well and then they went astray. And then they went the way of Cain and Balaam and Korah. Korah seduced people away from godly leadership. You don't need a pastor. There's no apostles today. We don't need apostles. I hear God. I don't need a prophet. I hear God myself. 
But you listen. Okay. All right. Who sent them? And what spirit are they operating in? What is the motive for their ministry? A lot of people, again, and y'all see me post about this, but posts don't get the same traction as lives and reels. Bless y'all for the reels. Y'all finally causing Facebook to pay me, so thank you. <laughs> okay, not a lot. Okay, but we're going to speak increase in the name of Jesus. It's been long enough. After two years of censorship, okay, we bless the Lord. But, but we have people who say, oh, they're a prophet. Okay, we already established the work of the fivefold and prophets. Okay? Where is your building and your planting? I'll wait. Do, 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 do. Where is your building and your planting? Where Where is what produces unity? Where is what edifies? If you're doing a renovation, you don't just gut the house and leave. Do I have any HGTV people in here? You don't just gut the bathroom, gut the kitchen, gut the room in, in balance and say, my work here is done. This, how does that help the people who are supposed to live in the house? You done gutted the household of faith. You've gutted the household of God and said, I did my work. What? Baby, you got to build. We, we have plans. <laughs> we have plans. We have to build, a.k.a. edify, and we have to plant, a.k.a. If you gutted the old bathroom, there was maybe, maybe, maybe a reason. Sometimes people be gutting the wrong stuff. I've heard stories about people who demolished the wrong house. Okay? Some, the wires got crossed somewhere and you'd have messed up and, and, and knocked down the house that was supposed to stay standing. Okay? So, so who sent you? Do you have the correct assignment? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing on the assignment? Right? Okay. But what about the new bathroom? Where are they supposed to pee? <laughs> okay. Where are they supposed to shower? Where are they supposed to relax? Okay. Where are the quartz countertops or the marble counter? Where where are the Delta hardware? Okay. Where's the nice tub? Where Where's the water efficient toilet? You just you just gutted it and left. Just we just supposed to figure it out ourselves. Just got saved. I don't, I don't have a, a, a license or I don't have an architecture degree. I don't, I don't have a license to do those things. I have no training, no apprenticeship to speak of whatsoever. But, but now I got to figure out how to, how to build this bathroom. Equipping, edifying for the sake of unity. For maturity! We can only be unified when we're mature. So, and nobody arrives, okay? We're all continually on the process, but we should be on the process actively. God should not be dragging us, okay? He should not be dragging us along, and we should not be going backwards, okay? That, no. We should be moving forward. Somebody cue Israel Houghton. Not moving backward because there's no in the middle. You're not just no. It move forward, baby. We got things to do. Occupy until he comes. Don't tear down until he comes. If you're gonna tear down, then build up. If you're not gonna build up, sit down somewhere and let somebody else who has the ability and the heart. Jonah wanted to see the Ninevites destroyed. He didn't want grace and mercy for them. Guess what? Jesus said, the measure that you give out, that you meet out to others, that you judge others by, that's what you've sown for yourself. It will be the measure you receive. It will be meted out to you. So if you have not shown mercy to others, baby, ain't nobody finna show you mercy in your time of need. If you have not, it won't be much mercy if they do. If you have been an accuser of the brethren, the brethren will accuse you. Somebody will accuse you, okay? If you have been a false talebearer, people will tell tales on you, baby, because that's what you've sown for yourself. 
and you reap more than what you sow. You sow a seed, you get an oak tree. You get a vine. You don't you don't get the little teen tiny. Mm -mm. You sow an acorn. But we have a mighty oak. That's what you sowed for. That's your harvest. It's not witchcraft. Uh -uh, don't say that. It's not warfare. Now it might be added to warfare, right? But it's what you sowed for yourself. The brute beasts are made for destruction. So what does the Bible have to say about evil speaking? And so, let me on, okay? Because a lot of you say, oh, it's not evil speaking. It's not slander. Okay. Just because somebody disagrees with you does not automatically make them a false teacher. Just because you don't like them does not make them false or compromised. They might just not be your cup of tea. You might just not understand the season that they're in. They might be in their own process. That doesn't make them false. And by the way, a bad prophet is not the same thing as a false prophet. False prophet has to do with the spirit and the motive behind what is being said and done. So you can give a bad word, you can miss it. You might need a little training, you might need to sit down, might need to go into the prayer closet, but it doesn't make you a false prophet. If you're prophesying to get their money and their connections, oh, their booty, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> if you're prophesying for your own gain, now you're a false prophet. It doesn't matter if you're accurate, because psychics are accurate. Channelers are accurate. Mediums and necromancers are accurate. Tea leaf readers, fortune readers, okay. They're all accurate. Now some are charlatans, but some are, have a legitimate gift that became corrupted in their life from the bloodline, right? Accuracy is not the litmus test of prophecy. Prophecy don't make you a prophet. I, I know, I know, I know. I was thinking about this yesterday. People are just like, oh, I heard the Lord say, oh. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Baby, you're saved. You should hear the Lord talking to you. Because I'd be concerned if you didn't. There are four levels or realms, categories, if you will, of prophecy. You have what I just said, Revelation 19, 10, that last word or clause there, a sentence there is the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, okay? If you're a believer, baby, you should be able to prophesy. Maybe not every day. You don't need to have a word of the Lord for the month of the year, okay? But you should be able to speak, dream, hear something from the spirit of God, okay? Everybody. Okay, we're all special. <laughs> Then you have sort of the subset of that, which is when you're in the company of the prophets. I have reels on this on Instagram and here, wherever, okay? There's the company of prophets, which is a subset of that. So now you're in the midst of the prophets and the spirit of prophecy jumps on you because you're in the midst. Now, you don't take it with you. It's only because you're in the midst. It might have a little bit of a lingering effect. But this is what happened to Saul when he got around the prophets before he became the king and one time when he was chasing David down, okay? And then they said, is Saul among the prophets because he prophesied? No, Saul is not a prophet, okay? He just prophesied because he got into the company of prophets and the spirit of prophecy jumped him, okay? This man killed the prophet of God. <laughs> killed, excuse me, killed the priest of God at one point. This man was... He wasn't a prophet, okay? I'm not saying prophets can't sin. I'm just, okay. Um, so you have the spirit of prophecy with the subset of the company of prophecy. Then you have the 1 Corinthians 12 gift of prophecy, right? You have a gift and you serve it to the body of Christ along with the other eight gifts of the spirit, okay? Um, that could be um, the working of miracles. That could be speaking in tongues, which is not the same as the general utterance, okay, that every believer has that we see at the end, in Mark 16, right? They shall speak in tongues and cast out devils, okay? Yes, these signs shall follow those who believe. That's talking about giving a message in tongues in 1 Corinthians 12. This is where we get up in the microphone and run, da, 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 so cold. And the Lord says, da, 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 either from somebody else or from you, maybe you have the gift of tongues and the gift of the interpretation of tongues, okay? Sometimes it shows up as, you know, um, I believe it's 
Dr. Mark Rutland, who's the president of Oral Roberts University, um, he um, can go to a Spanish-speaking country. This man don't speak Spanish. He white, okay? He does not. That is not his mother tongue. But the Lord gave him the gift of tongues from a from a natural standpoint. In the, in the sense of a natural language to where he can go to a Spanish-speaking country and he can preach, he can teach in Spanish. Never learn the language. But the Lord gave him the ability. And, I, you know, Perry Stone has told stories like this. I've heard other people tell stories where God will, maybe they think they're speaking in tongues, but it's an ancient dialect, you know, or it's it's an obscure dialect that only... A few thousand people know about, you know, but it's a natural tongue, right? So it shows up in different ways, but then it is beautiful, right? It's amazing. God is amazing. Like, why do we just kill each other all day when he's amazing? Okay, this is crazy. Okay, and then there's the, the, the there's the, someone to do a teaching on this. I'm sure people have, but I haven't any time recently or at all, maybe. I don't know. Then you have the interpretation of tongues, right? So, okay, this is not, we can't get in church and speak in tongues. They have the microphone, they can't talk in tongues. You need to go in your closet if you need to pray. Then, that's not the same thing, okay? General utterance, just like every believer should prophesy, every believer should speak in tongues. These signs should follow those who believe, okay? That's not the same thing as having a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy. We've been talking about prophecy, so I'm going to reel it back in. Okay, bring it back in, right? So you have all these different gifts, the gift of the discerning of spirits, the gift of the word of knowledge, the gift of the word of wisdom, right? All these different amazing gifts, nine gifts, okay, that you have that God has given you to serve the body of Christ. But guess what? You're still not a prophet. Now, a prophet can have those some of those different gifts and probably does, right? And a lot of the gifts cluster. So a lot of times you'll see someone who has the gift of prophecy, but also the discerning of spirits, but also the word of knowledge, but also the word of wisdom, right? But also people don't really know the difference. And so they'll say, oh, that was such a powerful word. That was such a powerful prophetic word. Maybe it was a word of knowledge. And a familiar spirit can counterfeit a word of knowledge. Oh, that was such an amazing prophecy. It wasn't a prophecy, it was a word of wisdom. Now, someone may give you, like, a group deal, like, and give you the gift of discerning of spirits, you know. <laughs> I was going to make a joke. I won't. Um, <laughs> but they, they may group the gifts together, right? Um, you might have the gift of prophecy. The Lord says that you have been struggling. Oh, no, word of knowledge. Okay, the Lord says that you have been struggling with da 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 And then the word of the Lord is da 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 But also, let me lay hands on you. Ha! Healed. Because prophets can also heal, right? That's a different topic, okay? There should be fruit. If you in an office, there should be fruit. Pertaining to whatever office you in, right? There should be fruit, okay? But then we have the Ephesians 4 office. Five-fold office prophet. So the, the first Corinthians 12 gift has a gift. That person has a gift. They serve it to the body. In Ephesians 4, you are the gift. Why do prophets have to suffer? Because we are the gift. God help us. Okay, it, it sucks sometimes. Do y'all see where I am? Do y'all remember the last live? Okay, we still in the same place. We are yet waiting on the Lord. I should have given y'all an update. I tried on Friday. Maybe we'll circle back around to that, okay? We suffer. And we suffer because of the call of God on our life. Now, sometimes we suffer because we did stuff too. Okay, sometimes we suffer as a harvest. Okay, but right now we're talking about there are just things that just you're called, so you're targeted your whole life. You're not a child offending religious leaders, probably. Okay, <laughs> like that. That's just, if you're a child being targeted by principalities, baby, you high ranking. Okay, maybe not on that day, but what's on your life is high ranking. Okay, so you're gonna have high ranking warfare hounding you your entire life. Okay. See, why are you married post, okay? Because these things happen. People don't understand that they happen. People think that they don't happen. And then because it's never happened to them, then they speak against it. Because they speak evil of what they don't know, y'all. Keep going back to those same texts, okay? Um, so there's a difference between someone who just has the ability to prophesy because they're saved or someone who got around the prophets and started prophesying or someone who has a gift of prophecy and someone who is a prophet, if you are a prophet, maybe you better be able to teach because how are you equipping people and you can't teach? 
How are you a prophet and you don't know the word? I have heard some things from prophets. People will say that's hate. People will say that's jealous of what? People will say that's, that's whatever. If you're a prophet, show me your fruit. Now, all the fruit is, there's different models of prophets, okay? There's different phases, seasons, we get that, okay? But overall, baby, show me the tree of your life. Where's the fruit? Because if, if there, and I'm not saying you're going to be mantled as a teacher. I believe I have a mantle of a teacher as well as a prophet, okay? And my fruit speaks for itself, okay? But you should be able to, quaint, uh, to train and equip something prophetically, right? Now, you can't make somebody a prophet. You can't host a school of prophets and make somebody a prophet and God ain't made him a prophet. What are you stirring up? You can't. Some of these activations are divination. Okay, that's, I'm going to leave that alone. We'll touch that a different day. Okay, but they're different. So stop saying just because someone prophesied, they're a prophet. No, that's how people get tripped up. And now you run it after someone who might have a gift. They might actually be an evangelist. A lot of evangelists are prophetic. They have to be. A lot of evangelists operate in signs and wonders. They're not an apostle. Now, they might be. It depends on who they are, right? But it, they're, look at how they operated in Scripture. Because if we saw hardcore apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors from the first church, from, from the New Testament, and now, we would be confused. We'd be calling all the prophets apostles. <laughs> We'd be calling all the evangelists. Everybody's an apostle, right? <laughs> Um, and you don't even know that the apostle can function in any of the gifts. They can lean into a grace, right? Based off of, on top of what, because they're probably maybe a hybrid, you know, already, you know, it's whatever. So we're going to go back to evil speaking, okay? Because a lot of y'all are calling stuff prophetic and it's not prophetic, it's satanic. Because accusation is satanic, Satan is the, his title means adversary. That's what Satan means, adversary. He is a antichrist against Christ. Okay, he is the accuser of the brethren, and Jezebel is his deputy. Jezebel took Naboth out because she wrote letters sent by the hand of the sons of Belial to to openly accuse him twisted things to accuse him and he was stoned to death and she took his vineyard and gave it to her husband because he was pouting in the corner with his face to the wall okay accusation Naboth did not blaspheme nobody but Jezebel said that he did and so the religious leaders stoned him because they didn't have discernment well the law of Moses says okay but what did he do what what is the truth of the matter did you did you Assess the source. Y'all really trusted Jezebel to tell you the truth? Did you? Okay, you trusted Ahab, who married Jezebel to tell you the truth? Whose father was previously the most wicked king in Israel before Ahab came along? You, you trusted him. Check the source, okay? So I have Psalm 140.11 pulled up. And I've got like four different translations pulled up, okay? Um, the New King James says, let not a slanderer be established in the earth. Let evil hunt the violent man to overthrow him. The King James Version says evil speaker. Let not an evil speaker be established. So we've got slander, evil speaker so far. Uh, the New Century Version, NCV, says don't let liars settle in the land. Let evil quickly hunt down cruel people. Y'all don't like this? Go back and read the Psalms. My Bible says the angel of the Lord will make their way dark and slippery and will hunt them down. That's Bible, okay? <laughs> Same book, okay? The New English Translation, NET version says, A slanderer will not endure on the earth. Calamity will hunt down a violent man and, make, and, and strike him down. That's descriptive, okay? And then you have the New Life version, the NLV, which says, do not let the man or woman who's talking hurts people stand in the land. May trouble hurry to catch and destroy the man who wants to hurt others. 
because a lot of you don't understand. You say, oh, they're a prophet. They're just exposing. You don't even know that they have a spirit of murder. You don't even know that that's a spirit of retaliation. It's a spirit of vengeance. But the Bible says vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I, the Lord, love justice. I will direct their work in truth. You, I got this. Sit down. Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. He didn't say go and kill them or go speak judgmental words from your own soul against them because people don't understand when you have not been through inner healing, when, when, however the Lord has healed you or allowed you to be healed, if you have not submitted to that process in your soul, your soul is in the feminine in scripture. My soul make her boast in the Lord. The old man, your flesh, and your spirit man are male context. Okay, not gender wise, but just, okay, go with me. Okay, what does this mean? Why, why is the soul feminine? Because the soul submits. The soul submits to whomever is leading. So if your spirit man is built up in the Lord and you're becoming a mighty oak of righteousness, Isaiah 61, right? You're, you're in Jeremiah 17, you're the tree planted by the rivers of living water whose leaf is not withering. Then your soul is going to submit to your spirit man, right? God help you if your spirit man is involved in witchcraft or some type of foolery, okay? But we're just going to go with assuming your spirit man is godly right now, okay? You sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. But if your flesh, your old man who you're supposed to crucify is leading, your soul will submit and go the way of the flesh. This is why in Galatians 5, sorcery is listed as a work of the flesh. But you say, but it's spiritual. But it's rooted in your flesh. What do you want? Because the spirit of witchcraft, before it's ever a practice or a ritual, a spell, a hex, anything like that, before it's a curse, it is manipulation, which includes seduction. Manipulation, intimidation, and domination. It's lust. You're lusting after something. Lust is not just sexual, okay? Lust is, I want that. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. That's what people are attaining by the power of witchcraft. So when your soul is unhealed, right? Because they manifested. Oh, I manifested this. Baby, you stole it. You didn't know it, but you stole it. Now, some people didn't know they stole it, and they did it anyway. That's black witchcraft, okay? But the people who are not trying to hurt nobody, and they're just, I'm manifesting. And manifesting is biblical, when you're doing it along the line, I have other teachings, okay? It's biblical along the lines of, of what the Lord is saying for your life in the season. So if you're asking anything in his name that he wants you to have, if you're binding and loosening according to what is already bound and loosed in heaven, what is authorized for you to bind and loose in heaven, if you're naming and claiming what God said is yours, cool. If you're not, Houston, we have a problem, and at best, you're praying amiss. In general, you do a witchcraft. You don't know it, but any will that you're trying to pray, decree, declare, prophesy, or manifest that is not the will of God is witchcraft. Your will, somebody else's will, what somebody told you to do, some cultural preference, denominational preference, witchcraft. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, in heaven, in my life right? As it is in heaven, okay? So we have to be mindful of these things. So the Bible does not mince words when it comes to evil speakers. Evil speakers, gossipers, false tell bearers. You know that not bearing false witness against your neighbor, that's one of the Ten Commandments. People who are not even saved recognize the Ten Commandments, y'all. But a lot of these things that we see are rooted in jealousy, in envy, and in covetousness. Jealousy hates you. It's mad that you have whatever. Envy, this is how Tiffany Buckner said it to me. Jealousy is content to hate you from afar. Envy wants to get close to you to be you. Covetousness is very similar to envy. Covetous is like envy, sorry, envy is like covetous and jealousy put together, right? Because it hates you, but it wants what you have. So now you're squarely in the space of the evil eye. Proverbs 23 talks about this. Um, 
uh, don't eat the food of him who has the evil eye. This, in a lot of your translations, will say the miser, but the miser does not begin to touch on what it is. It's, I don't want you to have. I don't want you to have more than what I have. I don't want you to have it before I have it. I don't want you to have something different than what I have. I don't want you to have something unless I helped you get it. All these types of, you don't want them to have. It's evil. It's evil. And when you are unhealed in your soul, when you're dealing with rejection, which often turns into rebellion, when you're dealing with anger and wrath, when you're dealing with jealousy and envy and covetousness and lust and strife and all these things, baby, you are the perfect highway and portal for witchcraft. You upon and you don't even know it. You operating in the evil eye and you don't even know it. You're sending ill wishes. See, I had to stop saying your thoughts don't matter in terms of sending thoughts. Because witches know that you can send thoughts. That's why that passage that talks about the evil eye in Proverbs 23 says, as a man thinks in his heart. So you see, see we, we pull that little line and we don't look at the context. He's saying, don't eat the food of him who hates you. Him who is whose eye is evil towards you. David, don't eat, don't eat Tom's food. Cause because he's been eyeing you. Cause he's jealous and envious that he wants he literally wants to hate you. Envy turns into hatred. Jealousy is a murderer. Envy is a murderer. If you're in it too long, covetousness is a murderer. Okay? If somebody overly admires you, that'll cross over into envy a lot of times and becomes murder. These things end in a spirit of murder. And while most people will never take a physical weapon and harm you, they use that mouth. What that mouth do, okay? It kills people. That's what it does. It slanders, it smears, it gossips, it defames, it libels. It is an evil speaker. And so if you have crossed over into the territory of an evil speaker unrepentantly, we've all had moments, okay? Repent, okay? <laughs> the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Every one of us, right? There are times I got to repent. God, I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. I got to go back to somebody or I got to repent for my tone, if not for what I said. You know, because your tone, okay, that may not be murderous, but it could be inappropriate. You know, you have to repent, okay? So if, you, if you're repentant, great. Do better, right? You know better, do better. Be holy as he's holy, okay? But if you are an unrepentant slander, you're an evil speaker, that just sums it up, whatever form it takes. You got fangs. Toward God's people, if you're, if you got the spirit of Caleb, uh, Caleb, <laughs> Caleb, Balaam, that is a nice way to put them all together. Cain and Korah and Balaam. If you got the spirit of Caleb, <laughs> don't name your babies that, okay? If you got the spirit of Caleb, you're an evil speaker. You're using words to harm people. Murder is in your heart. Covetousness is in your heart, right? And so. You have to deal with that because then your works are going to be the works of the flesh, which includes sorcery and divination. So you say, oh, I saw it in the spirit. No, you didn't. Well, actually you did, but it wasn't the spirit of God. That's why you got to be careful with these dreams. All of these dreams people have, I had a dream about these prophets. Why did you have the dream? Let's unpack that. Why did the spirits... In the dark familiar realm know that they could send you the dream you want to go there because they knew they were, you were gonna take it and you weren't gonna test it by the word try the spirits to see if they be of God because the spirit of error is the spirit of Antichrist first John 4 they knew you were just gonna take it and run with it and say oh I have this dream and I saw the prophet of God I saw the apostle. I saw my pastor. And now you're slandering. And then it's it's one thing when the you know because it's it can be tricky to tell if if you don't have discernment in general or if you the Lord hasn't given you discernment in the situation, right? Like it can be tricky to tell when someone's like, "Oh, the Lord showed me." We'll see. We got to test it. Because all prophecy is open to judgment. Let the prophets prophesy and let two or three, let two or three prophesy and let the others judge. 
you are not above judgment. I got a whole book on Amazon, shameless plug, called Judging the Prophetic. Go get it. Um, literally, it all the prophetic stuff has to be judged righteously. It has to be tested. It has to be weighed. Because even the right word at the wrong time is the wrong word, right? The right word for the wrong motive is the wrong, the wrong word. So if, you're, if you don't even know the difference between the Spirit of God and a familiar spirit, if you don't know the difference between the Holy Spirit dropping something in your spirit and a demonic or a witchcraft projection, now you become a slanderer. If you're telling this to other people, you become a slander. You're, you're easy pickings. I've mentioned this before about how, this was sometime last year, um, I was just in my bedroom, just, I don't know what I was doing. And I heard in my spirit, I'm gonna just say Susie, that's not her name, I don't know a Susie. Susie is a witch. And she's one of my friends from Clubhouse, who's now one of my offline friends. And I was just like, what? And I just shook it off, because I was like, that's, she's a prophet, she's not a witch. And I didn't think anything of it, really. I was like, I thought it was weird, but I didn't dwell on it, I should say. So later, when we talked, maybe a few months later on the phone, we are talking. And she tells me that maybe a few months before, she had been under attack where there were people slandering her, saying she was a witch. So if I had not discerned that something was wrong, or that that wasn't off, because it was off, it wasn't right. I was like, nah, she a prophet. Get away with that. If my spirit had not done that, I'd have said, oh, maybe she is a witch. And then you start talking. Oh, the Lord showed me so-and-so is a witch. See, it came into my spirit. Well, there were things that came into the spirit of the Python S in Acts chapter 16. You know, and some translations literally do call her the Python S. You know, the woman with the snake spirit. We Most of the translations say the woman with the spirit of divination. Divination is the spirit of Python, or it's from the spirit of Python, right? So she spoke what was true of Paul in his ministry laborers, his co-laborers. But the spirit was a lie. The spirit was Python. So when he discerned what the spirit was because he was just like, mm, so he said, come out in the name of Jesus. And lo and behold, he cast out a whole regional spirit. Because Jezebel's pet snake, one of them, is Python. She got Python and Kundalini as her pet snakes. So he cast out Python. And then the people hollering, great is Diana of the Ephesians. Great is Diana. Diana is Jezebel. It's just the Roman version of Jezebel. Just another variant. But but she sounded because Revelation 2, she calls herself a prophetess. He calls himself a prophet of God. He said he was an apostle. He said the Lord said, but you didn't test it. You didn't test the fruit. You didn't, you know, and, and we live in a day and age where people, I didn't mean to be here this long, but we here, okay. We live in a day and age where people will say, oh, well, what they said was true. What they mean is it's factual a lot of times. But if I'm quoting Adolf Hitler, well, it's true, but it's Derek Jackson, baby. <laughs> okay, like, who are our sources, people? And why are we quoting them? And what was their motive for saying what they said? And now you, okay, all right. The future is female. Hillary Ain said that. Now she repeated it. It was a lesbian separatist who said it. Now are you rethinking the future is female? This this is not wherever Wonder Woman came from. This is this is not wherever Sappho the poetess came from. This this is not the Amazons where there ain't no men among us except for child breeding and then maybe we'll kill them off. Whatever that story is, like, mm, we don't do that. What is the spirit behind what is being said and why is it being said? Okay, because these people are not prophets. God did not send them. If he sent them, they diverted. God didn't send them. So please, and y'all know, I will invite y'all to unfollow me. I don't care. Okay, I've done it many times over the years on my social media, on my email list. Listen, if I'm not for you, if I'm not your cup of tea, if I 
ever teach error, please leave me. Pray for me while you leave me, okay? If I'm not your girl, okay, not like personal relationship, but if I'm not the teacher for you, there doesn't even have to be anything wrong if I'm just not the season, for the, the, the person that God needs you listening to in the season, step away. Bye. God bless you. I mean it with my little whole heart. Okay. God bless you. Leave. Because you don't need to be here. Especially if I cross, and I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, but if I ever cross over into teaching something false, if I ever cross over into teaching my opinion as opposed to... Now, and there were times where Paul was like, and I also have the Spirit of God, meaning that was his it, his Holy Spirit-informed opinion, but it wasn't the Spirit of God, right? So differentiate between that. But if I ever start teaching my opinion as doctrine, run from me, okay? Please. And run from anybody who does that because that's not God. It's not God, Okay. I think we're done with that. Let's do Q&A. Anybody have questions about anything we talked about? I was good, y'all. I behaved.